Hello and welcome to SDK TV, powered by Data Meaning, and brought to you by Darren Holmblad. Today we're going to expand on a topic that we covered previously, which is building custom AJAX visualizations in MicroStrategy. Uh, there were some some users who wanted to go more in depth on this topic and find out actually how to use external libraries such as Google Maps or high charts in order to integrate MicroStrategy data into a custom visualization. So that's what we're going to touch on today. Uh, I decided to use Google Map API to map some custom markers with some data that I will show you in a second. And we're going to create a, or not create, expand on the existing plugin that we had created previously. So if you want to go on to my GitHub and download the existing Ajax visualization customization, we can expand on it and integrate Google Maps. So first I wanted to start out with the data set that I wanted to use for this. Um, I have loaded the following data into a MicroStrategy cube. Uh, you can see here we have three columns, state name, state latitude, state longitude. This is really the only information you need to map a marker on a uh, map. And I can show you that data. I uploaded it with the data import utility and created attributes for that table for each one of those columns and you can see here that we have data and it's reporting in MicroStrategy. So we have state name, state latitude, state longitude. As I said these are the only you know data points that we really need. Obviously we could add metrics and those could allow us to put thresholds on the markers or perform some additional actions. So if you remember we had a method called render visualization before and all it did was output the XML of the report that the visualization is sitting on top of. So we're going to go ahead and run that again so we can refresh our memory to see the output of that once my server gets up. So I have my server up, and what we're going to do is run a document that I've created on this data set, and we are going to apply the visualization that we configured in the previous tutorial. So if we open up this Google Map demo document that is created from the report that you had just seen, you can see that there is a grid and that grid is configured to be a AJAX visualization. So if you go to properties and formatting, go to widget and we've set the widget to be VHTML demo T3. So if we go ahead and run that in interactive mode, we can see Not see anything because I have changed the layout already. One second. So 
So as you can see here, we have the state name, the latitude and longitude, uh, and when I output it to this HTML container, it actually stripped all the XML content. But if you look over in the console, you can see that we have the XML content uh, that you have seen in part one. So we have a parent tag, a row tag for each row. And if I bring this over into Notepad, easier to see. But this is the syntax for each row. So what we're going to need to do in order to build a you know, Google Maps syntax so we can output markers for each one of these states is to grab, uh, most importantly, the latitude and longitude for every state. So we're going to do that in the demo Ajax Viz T2 transform. If you remember, this is the transform that renders the XML and sends it to T3. To be rendered within an iframe. So if we have the XML, all we need to do is simply parse through that XML and grab out the information that we need. And since we know the syntax because we created it in T1, uh, it should be fairly easy. So what I'm going to do is create a method called build object array to return a string. And I'm going to call some regular expression to get rid of this space right here because that will cause problems. And I'm going to get a JavaScript object, and that JavaScript object is going to be output to the markup output instead of just the XML. So if we expand this method that I've built, it will show you what is done. So with the XML we need to build a uh, document builder that will allow us to parse through each node of that XML document. So you can see here we've created a document builder and a node list and we get the parent node and from there we can get all the child nodes which are the rows. Once we have the rows, we can parse through them and get the actual data. So once we have the child nodes, which are the rows, we will create a Java array and simply loop through them. And when we loop through them, we are just obtaining the name, which I decided not to do anything with. Uh, actually, no, that's good enough. It should be right. We're grabbing the name the latitude and longitude. So if you remember that is the first row cell data is the name, the second is latitude, and third is longitude. So it's going to be in the order that it is on the row in the report that this visualization is on top of. Uh, it's easy to you know, output it to the console and you know look at the syntax. So I've created a loop that will loop through every single row and from there it will get the child line which is the row cell and if you know the index is zero, it gets name, if index is one, it gets latitude, if index is two, it gets longitude. And once I have all those strings, I can then build a JavaScript object right here, which contains a index, a Google Map position, and a name. And then I will put a closing bracket. So that is all I need to do from the Java side because now I have all the data I need in a very easily you know, readable format because I can just loop through that in JavaScript. So I now take this temp variable that I have gotten from build object array and I add it to the markup output. So now if we output this 
this in the console. You can see the JavaScript array that has been built. So you can see here, we have the JavaScript array. Has an ID, a position, and a name. So this is now being written inside of this iframe, and we can consume that with some additional JavaScript code. So once we have this JavaScript array being output into the uh, visualization iframe, We'll just need to create some JavaScript that will consume it and render a visualization of our you know, choosing. As I said, you can use you know, JavaScript APIs. You can create your own. Uh, some of the ones that I've worked with are you know, Google Maps or pie charts or other mapping APIs. As I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to use the Google API for this demo. Uh, that's why we've created this this attribute that is a position with latitude and longitude. So if you remember from the first part of this demonstration, there is a file, an XML file that calls the render method. And that is where we would insert custom JavaScript to be utilized by the visualization. So currently all this uh, XML layout file is doing is calling the render visualization method, which is found on demo T3. And that is where we'll add our additional JavaScript. So I have created this already, but I will walk you through it. So I definitely made some changes here. You can still see the render visualization method inside the XML file. Uh, I'll explain the other parts. So if you put C data tags, they will allow you to put you know standard HTML or script tags or JavaScript. Um, that's how we can add you know functionality to our visualizations through the layout file. So what I've done is I've created a HTML and head tag and included the jQuery framework as well as the Google API framework. And I created an open script tag so I can render the uh, JavaScript object that is rendered by the render visualization method, which is being sourced from T2. And after that, all I need to do is then consume that JavaScript object and render the visualization by choosing. So I have created some Google Map, you know, calls and samples for these are available, you know, from Google. Uh, this is very similar to, you know, their standard simple marker example. Um, so I create a method called initialize, which creates you know map options and a map style, and then calls new Google Map and applies it to this div down here that I've created called Map Canvas. So once that's complete, we then need to loop through all of the uh, objects in the JavaScript array that I've created. And I will do so by using jQuery uh, each function. So I just pass the location variable, which is defined at the beginning of this method. You can see this is the first part of the string result that we're returning from the build object array. So this is the variable that I created that you know stores that array. And we're going to loop through each of those and call a method called createHotel. 
So create hotel gets a object from that array and creates a new Google Map marker with the position and with the map object. We go ahead and save this and restart and we'll see what this code does. My server's back up. I'm going to go ahead and rerun this document and hopefully it will render a Google Map with all those markers on it. Great, so we have a map and made it kind of small, but if you zoom out, you can see that there's a marker rendering you know, within each state, which means that it was able to successfully read our JavaScript array and call the create, create hotel uh, method that I have. So the main point of this you know, demonstration was to show how easy it is to consume microstrategy data in a custom visualization. Obviously, this specific example can be enhanced to, you know, have click actions where you show the, the state name, or users could, you know, add metrics within the data and apply some thresholding and render some custom markers. It's really open ended from here. So, you know, with this example, in the T2, you know, all you need to do is add additional columns to your, uh, your if statement, or additional, you know, if statements, which would pick up the additional columns in your data and create a more complex object in the array. And you could read, you know, any data you wanted and create, you know, any visualization that you desire. So, I'm going to upload this code onto my GitHub repository, which is linked in this video. And feel free to post any questions that you might have or any topics that you'd be interested in seeing.